Welcome! In this lesson, we'll be using Zod to create TypeScript-first schemas in order to validate the data we receive from the Pexels API for our image gallery. We'll also be able to use the schemas to infer our TypeScript types so you don't have to manually type out both schemas and types for the same data. Back in VS Code, let's click on our package.json file. Now that we're clicked on package.json, we'll be able to see the dependencies we've installed and what we're going to install. So let's press control in the back tick to open a terminal window. Now I'm going to type npm i zod and press enter. So we'll install zod as a dependency. That was quick. Let's go ahead and close this. And we should see it listed at the very end of our dependencies in our package.json. And now let's go back to the documentation for the Pexels API. I'm back in the Pexels API documentation and I'm looking at curated photos. You could also be looking at the search photos. Either one will work. What we're interested in is the example response that you see over here. And if we scroll down, we can see more of it, but I'm just going to click the copy button right here and it should say copied after you click that. We're going to take this example response and paste it into our VS Code file that we're just about to create as a guide. Okay, back in VS Code, let's click on the source directory. We want to create a new folder at that level, the same level that is at the app directory. So inside the source directory, but not inside the app directory. Once you've clicked on source, click on the new directory icon and let's name this models with a capital M and then inside of the models folder, and I guess you could use lowercase as well. I just chose to use an uppercase, but inside of this folder, let's create a new file named images.ts. And I did use a capital I there. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and rename this with a lowercase if you used a capital because I was thinking of the file instead, but it's fine to leave the directory names in lowercase. I typically name the model file that I'm going to create with an uppercase letter like images.ts. Let's start this file by importing Zod. So we're going to import Z and Z is going to come from Zod. After we've made that import, let's go ahead and paste in that object that we copied from the Pexels API documentation. So control V should paste all of that in. We'll get a lot of red from TypeScript, but don't worry about that right now. We're just looking at this object and we're going to base the schemas we create on this. What I really want to highlight is we're going to create two different schemas here. So we're going to make the photos a separate schema, then we'll add them back together later on. So take the photos here that I have on line six, and then the array that is the value for photos, and then come down and press shift and click. I'm on line 29 and control X and it cuts all of that out and we're left with a very small object for the rest of the image. Now we could post or paste the photos object or array underneath that if we want to as well. And then we'll eliminate some of the things that we're not going to use inside of a photos object. So with this, let's go ahead and say, we're going to use the ID, we're going to use the width, the height and the URL, but we don't need the photographer information or the average color. So I'll delete those. And then as far as the source is con concerned, and that is the different URLs for the different images, we're only going to use the one that is labeled large. So we can delete those others. And that will give us a great example to show how Next.js can really optimize a large image. So that's why we'll use the large one. Liked, we do not need that. We will use the alt value though, and then we may add some of our own. So we could save that much just to keep what we have, and then we'll format this, but we can just comment these out and look at these as we create our schema as well. It just helps give us a guide. So let's start building our basic image schema right above this. So I'm going to say const, and then I'll label this basic image schema. I'm going to set this equal to Z dot object, and then inside of parentheses, we'll start to create an object that has our schema. So it will have a page, and here we can say page is a z dot number, and then it will validate that data to ensure we receive a number for page. So we can go ahead and remove that, and then we could have per page. We might need that later on when we are working with pagination in the project. So that is also a number. After that, we might have a next page, and this is where we should go back and look at the documentation because here they show a next page, 
but we almost also might have a previous page, and I just want to show that those are optional. We should also have a total results that we didn't get in that example object, or at least I missed it if not, but I think we just used the copy button, so maybe they didn't have it in their example, but let's check the documentation. Back at the Pexels documentation, we can see page and per page. Notice we're not passing per page when we send a request, as I had mentioned in the last lesson, because the default's 15, and that will be fine per page. After that, the response. So this is what we're going to look for when we get information back. Now this is what we're defining with our schema as well. So photos, we're going to create a separate schema there. But page we set as a number, or an integer, if you will, but Zod calls that a number. Per page is also an integer. There is a total results. It's not optional, so we should be receiving that, and I'm not sure why they didn't show that in their example response. But then a previous page and a next page, notice both of those are optional here. So we need to indicate that as well, which will also play a role in our TypeScript type. Back in VS Code, let's go ahead and add the optional previous page, and they'll say that is a string, and then it is optional, and then we'll also have a next page, and that is going to be the same, z.string, and also be optional, and you can notice how Zod has us chain different things to our data. There's much more to learn about Zod, and I encourage that. Consider this a simple introduction if you haven't worked with it before. And then there's also total underscore results, and we'll use this as a number. And notice these should match what the API documentation told us. And if you didn't catch it before, previous page and next page were indeed strings instead of numbers, and they are both optional. And now let's begin creating our photo schema. So just underneath, we'll say const, I'll say photo schema. We'll set this equal to zod.object. And inside of parentheses and curly brackets, we'll start with the ID, and that is zod.object number. And after that, there is going to be a width and a height that are both numbers as well. And then I'll need to scroll to see the rest. So let's scroll up and we can see more of our object. After that, we should have a URL that is a string. So let's go ahead and add that URL and Z dot string. And then we should have a source. So that's SRC. Now notice, this is another nested object. We could create a separate schema, but really we don't need to. It's only going to have this one property. So if we want to have a nested object inside of our schema, we can. We just need to start out and say this is an object as well. And then inside of this object, we can once again define the properties inside. So here I'm just going to say large, and now this is going to be zod.string. After that, there's still an alt value for the image, so we'll have alt, and that should be zod.string once again. But then we want to add one other value for Next.js that isn't here, but it's something we're going to create later. So I'll just go ahead and add that now, and you can too. It's called the blurred data URL, and we'll make that a string, but we better make it optional because we won't be receiving this from the Pexels API. And if we don't receive it and it's not optional, Zod will throw an error saying our data doesn't validate. And of course, that's a good thing as we're in development. That's why we use Zod and TypeScript is to catch these things during development so we don't have a problem when we deploy our project. Okay, we've created our two main schemas, but now we need to merge these for the results that we'll get from the API. Let's go ahead and delete our example here that we use to guide us. And now we'll start first with a definition. We'll call this image schema with photos, but it needs to export as well. So we'll say export const. Notice we did not export either one of these, but here we'll say export const images schema with photos. A long name is good as long as it's descriptive. We'll set this equal to basic image schema dot extend. So we're extending the schema we created, and then we'll have parentheses and curly braces. And now inside of this, we'll say photos, because remember that original API response had photos as an array. So here we'll say z dot array. And inside of this, 
we can pass the photo or photos. No, it's photo schema. There we go. And after that, it should close with a curly bracket and a parenthesis. So now we've combined the two into images schema with photos. And finally, we need to infer our TypeScript types from these schemas that we've created in Zod. So we can do that just below and I'll say export type. This type will be photo. Set this equal to z.infer as we infer the types. Now we'll use a less than sign and say type of photo schema. And it's that simple to create our photo type. We'll have one more here, export type images results. Set this equal to z.infer once again, and we'll say type of, and this will be images schema with photos. And now we've created the types that we will need. And in the next video, we'll put all of this to use as we create our fetch images function to retrieve images from the Pexels API.